Turquoise isn't the only gem hiding among the rocks in Nevada. There are plenty of fossils to be found too. We travel to Berlin Ichthyosaur State Park to look at the fossil of an ancient marine reptile that once made its home here. As I looked out the window, it was hard to imagine that 200 million years ago, a warm sea covered this part of Nevada, and giant prehistoric ichthyosaurs swam where mountains now stand. I couldn't wait to learn more about Nevada's state fossil from Jeff Morris, a ranger we'd arranged to meet at the park. All right, what we're looking at right here is one of the largest species of ichthyosaur ever found. Its scientific name is Shonosaurus popularis, and it was named that because it's found here in the Shoshone mountain range, and then the popular effort brought about to have it excavated and eventually put on display inside the shelter. So why is the eye so big? The eye is so big is because these animals fed on what are called cephalopods, or your giant squid. Those are predominantly a deep water creature found anywhere from three to 600 feet below the surface of the ocean. Why don't we uh, head inside and start looking at the actual fossils? Okay, sounds great. A shelter has been built to protect the fossils and preserve them for future research. If you guys want to stand next to me, we'll start looking at these fossils as they were found in the ground here. Anywhere you see a darkened area in the quarry, that's fossil material. That darker coloration comes from a preservative placed on the bone to keep it from weathering and cracking. So we'll start down here at the letter A. This is the top of the skull for the first animal. That's the area right above the eye socket, right through here. These two long sections of bone would be the jaw bones. They're out of place. They should come down from A to form a snout, which is shown here on the model. But somehow over time, after he decomposed, those jaw bones got pushed back towards the body. If you stretch those jaw bones out, that skull alone is almost 10 feet in length. Wow. If we could jump up to the letter B, we have two large bones at B. Um, those are known as coracoids. That's the chest bone region. And that leads us to the two letter C's, which is the start of the front flipper bones for this animal. So if you can imagine, he's swimming right down towards us just like this. Right? right above this letter C, we see the start of the rib cage. There's three or four rib bones. And that leads us to the backbone vertebrae up here at the letter D. You can follow the vertebrae from the letter D on up the crevice to the letter E, and up at the letter F starts the tailbone section for this animal. Unfortunately, there's only about five feet of tailbone vertebrae left. Uh, most of it had eroded. When you add on the appropriate number of vertebrae and extend this animal's jaws out, this is our 56-foot specimen, or the one that's represented on the wall outside. Wow. Wow. To give you a few uh, better close-up features of the skull here, you can see the eye socket is located on the side here. This is where the air, air passage would be, these being an, an air breathing marine reptile. And over here we have one example of a tooth found from Shonosaurus. This was found out near Lovelock, Nevada. Um, its scientific name was Symbospondylus. And it was the largest ichthyosaur found throughout the world up until Shonosaurus was discovered. Ichthyosaurs were pretty common in most ancient seas. As we left the site, I realize this makes their extinction all the more mysterious. 